Now I want to introduce you to another type of analysis and that is the situation where we have a cumulative soil deposition. For example, tailings deposition. The depth of the tailings continually increase and the hydro corresponding hydraulic boundary conditions continually increase as the tailings is being placed. Related to this uh, situation, there is another feature in Sigma W that I want to talk about and that is that obviously the conductivity of the soil changes as the effect of overburden increases or as the soil consolidates. There are two examples example files that we ship as uh, part of the GeoStudio software and also are included in the workshop resources here and they represent the idea of tailings deposition. And the file here and the simulation starts out with some known situation and then a lift of tailings is being placed and the water level always being at the surface of the tailings, the hydraulic boundary conditions change with time and as a result we keep on placing another lift, another lift, another lift and so forth. And this is just an illustrative example of the type of thing that can be done. In between each lift, the lift will be sitting there for a period of time so we have some delayed time between each, each layer. And what we want to illustrate here is some intermediate dissipation of pore pressure in between placing some of the layers of tailings and then the excess pore pressure does not all dissipate before the next lift comes on so we have some net accumulation of pore pressure and then if the deposition should ultimately stop then there is some long-term dissipation of the excess pore pressure. One of the major features of Sigma W here is the placement of the fill which is self-weight which is a applied load but at the same time the hydraulic boundary condition continually changes as the surface of the deposition increases and changes. Sigma W has the ability to modify the conductivity as the effective stress increases. As you know from a consolidation test, if we had a consolidation sample and we load the sample that the void ratio changes as the load increases but at each load step also the effective vertical stress increases and at each load step the conductivity of the soil changes. Currently in Sigma W we account for this by allowing you to m define what we call a K modifier function. And as the soil consolidates, the pore pressures dissipate, the effective stress increases, and as a result, we can decrease the conductivity. The defined conductivity is modified by a function like this. So here we have one order of magnitude change in modifier. So if the effective stress goes from 10 kPa up to 100 kPa, the conductivity of the soil goes down 10 times. So the conductivity has become less as the effective vertical or effective stress has increased. Fundamentally, what is attempted here is to modify 
the hydraulic conductivity as a, f an a, as a function of the effective overburden stress. We can go to GeoStudio and briefly look at the procedure of doing this type of an analysis. File, open. SIG 19A. You can see that we have are placing tailings, so to speak, in several seven different lifts, and finally we have a dissipation phase. Here we are placing the first lift and uh, the self weight of the material is being applied. Plus, we are saying that the pore water pressure at the surface of the tailings is zero. Then as we move to the second lift, notice that the hydraulic boundary condition here has been removed, but now the water table here is at the ground surface, again, or at the surface of the deposition and we do this for each one of the lifts. And as we go to each lift, once again we have the self-weight and we once again have the zero pore water pressure at the surface of the deposition. The file as presented to you uh, has all of the definition but doesn't have the solution so we need to click on solve select all the analyses and click on start. And it takes a few moments for Sigma W to run through each one of the analysis and compute the pore water pressure conditions during this coupled analysis. Briefly looking at the results view after the last lift has been placed, say draw a graph and plotting pore water pressure versus the uh, elevation, the y coordinate. We are looking here at the pore water pressure accumulation. First of all, let's look at the starting condition and holding down the control key, we see that there is some dissipation during, from the time the lift was placed until we place the second lift. Once the second lift is placed, of course, not all of the pore pressure had dissipated. There was still some excess here, and so now we're getting some cumulative effect. We can look at the cumulative effect by looking at the, um, at the start of the second and the holding down the control key, the start of the third, the start of the fourth, the start of the fifth, and the start of the sixth, and the start of the seventh. And so even though there is some pore pressure dissipation, while each lift sits there for a period of time, there is some net accumulation. Once we have reached the uh, maximum, and then of course there is some long-term uh, dis dissipation of the excess pore pressure with time. I won't take any more time to dwell on uh, this uh, example here. You can study it at your own leisure if you wish. I'm going to now go back to the PowerPoint presentation and just briefly talk about the effect of modifying the hydraulic conductivity 
with increasing in effective stress. So you can see here we have a situation where we have no k is a constant. That's this case here. And then we have k here as a function of the effect of overburden stress. And you can, of course, see that near the bottom of the column, where the effect of stress is the highest, we have a lower conductivity, therefore, at the same time, less dissipation of the excess pore water pressure. So when we are dealing with soft sediments like tailings, for example, then if we are interested in real-time consolidation, then we need to be able to modify the hydraulic conductivity as a function of the effective overburden stress, and we can do this through a modifier function. Such a function would likely be obtained from doing an ordinary odometer test or consolidation test. So in summary, another example showing how we can simulate changing conditions with time, both total stress changes with time and changing hydraulic boundary conditions with time and the dissipation of the excess pore water pressure with time and how we can modify the hydraulic conductivity as the pore pressure dissipates and the effect of stress increases.